Hi, I'm Pamela Anderson with PETA. You might not think about it every time you get dressed, but every time you put on a pair of shoes, a belt, or a pair of gloves, chances are you're wearing leather. And out of all the things that animals are abused for, leather is the most common. Do you ever wonder where it comes from? Leather is produced in many different countries, but much of it comes from India. In India, cows have been held in high esteem from the earliest of times. They are seen as the symbol of motherhood and givers of life. But now, thousands of these animals are being killed every week. Most poor families in rural India sell their cattle after receiving assurances that the animals will live out their lives on farms. Perhaps the corrupt leather trade's first blatant lie. At auction, young cattle many of them too young to be legally sold, are separated from their mothers and put up for sale alongside water buffalo, bulls, and old dairy cows. Because cattle slaughter is forbidden in most of India, the animals are forced on a death march to one of the few states in this huge country where they can be legally killed. To say the ordeal is stressful doesn't begin to describe it. To prepare for their long march, many cattle have shoes nailed to their feet. A rope is threaded through their noses to keep the animals together. Sometimes the frightened cattle tug against one another and the rope rips their noses apart. The animals are beaten mercilessly with sticks. A closer look shows that the hair stands on end from fear and exhaustion. The cattle are forced to walk, sometimes for days, through the heat and dust and are not given food or water. It is no wonder many of them collapse. But instead of receiving help, the animals who fall actually have chili peppers and tobacco rubbed into their eyes and have the bones in their tails repeatedly broken in an effort to get them on their feet. Chili? Hey, what do you say as a doctor? What's the condition? Mitch is very, very poor. She's dehydrated, she's emaciated, she's weak. She can barely stand. I doubt she's going to be able to walk at all. What means that chili in the eyes for the cow? That's just to perk her up. That's just, that, that doesn't do anything to help her. It just makes her a lot a more alert like that. Do you think it's painful? Yes, it's very painful. Cattle's painful journey worsens when they reach a border because transporting them across state lines for slaughter is illegal. They are loaded into trucks under the cover of darkness. Border guards are bribed to allow the trucks through. Then the confused cattle are forced back onto the road to continue the death march. When the cattle are unloaded, there are no ramps. It is difficult for the animals to see. Handlers force them to jump from the bed of the truck or scramble down steep embankments. The cattle routinely suffer serious injuries, such as broken pelvises, legs, ribs, and horns. Some of the cattle are dead upon unloading, and live animals are often trapped beneath their bodies. You're probably thinking, there ought to be a law. Well, there is. But it's no match for the bribes, corruption, or Western demand for cheap leather. The Constitution of India prohibits the slaughter of cows and calves, and the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals Act mandates humane treatment for all animals. India's trucking laws for cattle are excellent, but almost never enforced. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. And she can't get up also. See this? Be careful. Oh, man. She's, she's, broke. she's, she's in broken. Pain. They've been breaking her tail, trying to make her get up. And... What's, what's that for? And this is the painkiller that I use. Okay, so you're gonna go. See, they have two or three loads. I'll do the 
In India, it is illegal to slaughter milk-giving cows and little calves like this one. Yet workers ignore the law. Hmm. It's illegal to slaughter a cow and plus a young cow also. A produ producing cow, it's illegal. <laughs> And, while well, Indian law allows no more than six cattle per truck, two or three times that number vie for standing room. Overcrowding causes the animals to inadvertently gouge and blind each other with their huge horns. And the babies and the weaker animals often fall and are smothered or trampled. Handlers twist the necks and yank the nose ropes of the others to force them off the truck. From all over India, cattle arrive at slaughterhouses like this one. By the time they are unloaded, Half have collapsed from injury or exhaustion, or are dead. Here, you see injured and dying animals strewn across the grounds. Animals like this are left in the hot burning sun without water, food, or medical care. As hard as it is to watch, slaughter is actually the only relief these animals get. Cattle are often killed in full view of one another. The cattle are supposed to be killed in the halal manner, but the required quick slice across the throat with a sharp knife is often replaced by hacking and sawing with a dull blade. Skins from these animals go to tanneries where they are treated with chemicals such as chromium and other toxins to stop decomposition. These deadly substances find their way into surrounding water sources used for drinking and cooking. Experts have linked tannery pollution to the high incidence of leukemia and cancer for Indians, including poor children and families who work in and live near leather factories. Little by little, word is spreading. There are groups in India opposed to cattle slaughter. Some citizens actually stop cattle trucks, summon the police, and seize the animals. Jain monks protest outside of one slaughterhouse every day, but their public prayers have fallen on deaf ears. Peter President, Ingrid Newkirk was able to rescue a few worn out and collapsed animals who now enjoy life in a sanctuary. Please, think twice when buying your next jacket, pair of gloves, or belt. To learn how you can help, call PETA. Thank you. <laughs>